Welcome to this month's AFP uh, educational program. We are so thrilled to be here at the Blair Singer Academy. It's going to be a great program today. I want to first of all thank our sponsor for today, Martz and Lundy and Willard White. Thank you. Go back to the Great Recession. It's the first time in our history back in 07, 08, when we actually saw a dip in philanthropy. Many of us, and I have been in this business for decades, many of us believe that philanthropy was immune to economic forces and change. It turns out we're wrong on that point at that time. Rapport simply means understanding, trust. How, how long does it take to build trust? Could take a while, yes? How long does it take to destroy it? Seconds. So it's a very precious, fragile piece. Identification, qualification, cultivation, solicitation, and then stewardship. Give them a big hug, tell them they're amazing. Only reason why with a donor, in my opinion, that they want to give to you is because you're able to understand their deep desire, their compelling reason why they want to give and able to relate it to your mission. So what got you to sit with me here today? Completely opposite, isn't it? You're not selling right now. You, they are, you're allowing them to sell themselves in a way. Okay? <laughs> See what happened just right here? Who, who, was, who was pitching to who? In all honesty, you, you completely flipped the, the script on me. I kind of forgot which one I was. <laughs> was that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> all right, very good. Yeah. Very good. So it has to be a conversation. Did it seem like a conversation here? Yes? It wasn't pitching. I was just having conversation. And that's how trust is built. I didn't start throwing, okay, well, if you give me $5,000, <laughs> now you'll be able to help, you know, three kids. Because if a donor really understands your mission and they really trust you and they're interconnected with what you're saying and you're asking the right questions and they understand that you understand what their compelling reasons are the only closing you gotta use is what would you like us to do next if you feel it say it help me understand see that help me understand what what, what got you to be curious about our mission you don't want to waste their time and you sure don't want to waste your time because you could be helping other animals or other people if you are in front of the right donor and if you are addressing their concerns. Fair? Your job is to disqualify as many donors as possible so you can get to the right donor and get bigger gifts. <laughs> you seem very excited. Can you, can you just tell us what's going on just right here? Well, I think that creates freedom for us. And um, it takes pressure off because it's not about us. And we don't have to worry about it. And it's not about, oh, I lost him. No, he made a decision to go somewhere else and, and give his money to something that is really meaningful to him. And that's good because it frees up our time to do other th things with people who want to be engaged. Please thank Blair and Cal and Willard for making today possible as he draws the winning ticket. I say thank you to all of you. I wanna thank Blair and Cal and your team for taking us as fundraisers to a new place. Um, and if I could say, I, I've written down about 10 things that really impressed me about today, but I'll, I'll only say one. And that is, um, let me see. Actually, I'm gonna say two, all right? I think what you helped me see was I, um, all of the presumptions and assumptions and I used that phrase before that we take into our that we have in our jobs and we take into our meetings with our donors you gave us permission to be bold to be clear um, about asking what they want and about here's the really big part stating what we want on behalf of our organizations. And that is a huge, huge step. And I'm excited to see what happens with all of us in that. Um, the other thing, when someone else at my table, um, or someone else said, you're helping us get out of our own way. 